program. Thanks for having me. It's good to have you back. Um, I, as I mentioned a bit ago, we, I, I, I want to make sure I mention your book, Christ in His Fullness, uh, which the Coming Home Network uh, published for you. But the reason I mention that is often when people talk about the journey of Protestants of the Catholic Church, they're thinking Protestantism, Catholicism, but Protestantism isn't that unified. And so your unique book talks about the journey of a Church of Christ minister, the unique issues that a Church of Christ person would go through, and also the unique barriers that they would encounter in thinking about the Catholic Church. But I'm going to ask you to give a quick summary of that, just a reminder, audience, okay. of your journey. Basically, I was raised a Southern Baptist. When I came to college at Auburn University here in Alabama, uh, okay. War Eagle, I... Uh, <laughs> ended up joining the Churches of Christ. I was attracted to their plea about what they consider to be non-denominational Christianity. Uh, upon graduation from Auburn, I went to a Church of Christ school of preaching with my heart set on being a missionary, particularly to Latin America, to reach out to Catholics who I thought were not really Christians. And was that specifically your, your yes, agenda? My agenda. Because not I, just going to save the lost. To save the save lost, Catholic. but well, the lost Catholics, I mean, you know, <laughs> Uh, tomato, tomato, you know. But basically what we did was uh, some years after graduating from the, the seminary, I uh, came across a, a Catholic family that uh, I tried to convert. And in the course of our tussling back and forth, they gave me Carl Keating's Catholicism and Fundamentalism to read, yeah. and uh, which really kind of rocked my apple cart, turned it over, uh, and got me thinking about things I hadn't thought about before, particularly pertaining to the issue of authority. Uh, which was the primary driving force in my conversion, particularly canon. Uh, how did I know mm -hmm. as a Church of Christ preacher that there were really just 27 letters in the New Testament? Why not 29 and two are missing? And, or why not 25 and no. two shouldn't be there? So that issue of canon was something that really kept me awake at night. Uh, but then a crucial juncture in my conversion to the Catholic faith, though, was the first ever Coming Home Network's uh, retreat in Steubenville, Ohio at Franciscan University uh, in December of 93. The reason I say that was crucial, I had studied the Catholic faith then for several months, uh, intellectually trying to pick it apart, trying to analyze it, trying to come up with the right answers. But conversion is not just an intellectual pursuit. Mm. Uh, grace is involved. And at uh, Franciscan University at that uh, Coming Home Network retreat, uh, God gave me some graces that I needed. Um, uh, when I attended Mass for the first time mm. without the intention of critiquing it, but of observing it and asking myself questions. You know, what if mm. what the Catholic Church says about what's happening here is actually happening? What if that man, the priest, is who they say he is? What if what they say is happening, Christ coming down on the altar, body, blood, soul, and divinity? What if that's true? Mm. And those questions uh, resulted in a confirming miracle in my conversion because I was rendered speechless. <laughs> so I, you know, people who know me well said, that, that's quite miraculous. Uh, and I, I left that conference knowing I'd one day become Catholic. And then thanks be to God, about a year and a half later, I was received into the Catholic Church in 1995. And my wife, Gloria, who was a lifelong Church of Christ member, in fact, at least five generations of Church of Christ in her background, uh, was received four years later in 1999. <laughs> and my oldest daughter now just finished up two years at Franciscan University of Steubenville, uh, which has become a very important uh, uh, institution in our family. You, um, again, the audience, uh, this can be your phone calls and emails, so uh, give us a call here. There's so much I'd love to talk to Bruce about. We, we could talk for hours and hours on, on things. Because as former clergy, both of us, we've seen it from both sides, and we see the, the church, sometimes the struggles in the church. Um, Often, I get questions from Catholics about, well, what is it that Protestants believe about this? Or Protestants believe about that? Yeah. And that's a hard question to answer. Talk about that a bit from your particular sliver of Protestantism. Yes, in other words, a Protestant is not a Protestant is not a Protestant. In fact, some Protestants deny they are Protestants. Uh, in the Church of Christ, uh, they deny they are a Protestant denomination. In fact, one of the... Uh, most famous tracts that they circulated in their history is called neither Protestant, Catholic, nor oh, Jew. Because they were yeah, just yeah. Christians, the Christians you read about in the Bible. And there were certain similarities in the Church of Christ to the Catholic faith and certain dissimilarities. The similarities kind of acted like a bridge between my evangelical upbringing and eventually becoming a Catholic. For example, it was the Churches of Christ that taught me that baptism was for the remission of sins. 
That's a very Catholic idea, but it's not a very Baptist idea. Mm -hmm. uh, the Church of Christ taught me that um, Christ established a visible, identifiable, institutional church. That too is a very Catholic idea, but not a very Baptist idea. They also taught me that justification was not by faith alone, but by faith working through love. Again, a very Catholic idea, but not a very evangelical idea. And so there are many things about the Catholic, about the Church of Christ that are very similar to the Catholic faith that kind of acted like stepping stones, but where they departed, I've always thought of the Church of Christ being kind of like a watered down Catholicism in a sense. Hmm. Yes, baptism is for the remission of sins, but Church of Christ limited strictly to the total submersion of, an, of, a, of, a, of a, a penitent believer, someone who's got attained the age of reason. Well, that's the Catholic Church does not believe that baptism is limited only to submersion, and neither did the early church for that matter. Uh, uh, the Catholic Church does believe in a visible, identifiable institutional church, but the Church of Christ think that they're it. But they came along 2,000 years too late, basically, or 1,800 years. Uh, so there were similarities and dissimilarities, and like you say, you can't lump all of Protestantism under one umbrella. Yeah.